is typical disclaimer that these are his personal views and do not reflect the views of any law officer of government of india or ministry of law mr parasaran was requested to speak on emerging international tax trends from a legal perspective from a law officer's perspective and here is what he has to say disputes relating to international tax have been the focus of much debate in the last decade it need not be emphasized that owing to rapid globalization and constant technological innovations geographical boundaries have ceased to be an obstacle in trade and commerce free and seamless trade is of course desirable for growth and development everywhere however it is also equally important that domestic legal regimes are complied with wherever their trade takes place every country wants to protect its revenue base and india is no different international direct taxation litigation involving large multinational companies is on the rise as mnc's flocked to set up shop here though the intensity has gone down considerably for a variety of reasons which are res ispa locator which means things as they speak and need not be elaborated before this learned audience given that india is a developing economy and it's well placed in securing proximity to emerging markets the business of mnc's keeps growing thus there is undoubtedly a need to ensure that india receives its fair share of revenues from such operations i will attempt to outline the legal perspective with which certain emerging tax trends and policies are viewed in my capacity as a law officer for government of india number 1 classification of cases looking back at the last few years of international tax litigation in india i find that the leading disputes can broadly be classified in two categories cases arising out of innovation in technology and cases arising out of innovation in finance in the first category would be those cases where the developments in the field of technology usually it or telecommunications have challenged the very concept of residence and source based taxation very recently the madras high court in the case of verizon has ruled that the amount paid by indian companies to a foreign company for dedicated broadband services constitutes royalty and ought to be taxed in india under the income tax act as well as under the india singapore tax treaty analyzing the technical aspects of providing bandwidth services in detail and interpreting the retrospective amendments to the definition of the term royalty in section 9 made in finance act 2012 the honorable court observed that retrospective amendments have removed all doubts in so far as the expression use or right to use was to be understood in the context of possession control or location thus the court has approved that the term right to use is a wide amplitude subsequently in the panel discussion we are going to debate on the verizon case he again says another example is that of nokia in delhi this is not the nokia which is in the news in the last few years or rather in the last few weeks this is a characterization issue the nokia case in the nokia case the revenue had sought to tax royalty paid to indian companies for proprietary software downloaded by the indian subsidiary from the foreign parent to be installed on mobile phones manufactured here the dispute is currently pending before the delhi high court and it remains to be seen as to what will be the impact of the retrospective amendments to section 9 and the earlier high court decision in the case of same taxpayer so early this year the delhi high court took a view which is contrary to the madras high court saying that when you are interpreting retrospective amendment in the context of section 9 you will need to look at the treaty and not at the domestic law whereas the madras high court has taken a contrary view an important emerging phenomena which has marked its presence only in the last couple of years is the landscape of indian tax litigation this is the concept of virtual presence in india or permanent establishment through a website in the verizon case though no arguments on the existence of a pe was advanced the court has observed as follows 
when it comes to the question of dealing with issues arising on account of more complex situations brought in by technological developments by the use of and the role of digital information goods etc the foreign enterprise does not need a physical pe in or at all in a country for carrying on such business but the court has emphasized over here that it should be carrying on business which is a factual situation prior to that the kolkata tribunal in the case of right florist has held that a search engine having its presence only in the form of website cannot create a permanent establishment unless its web servers are also located in the relevant jurisdiction significantly the calcutta tribunal observed as follows it is a policy which is embedded in the conventional pe model which has outlived its utility as an instrument of invoking taxing rights upon reaching a reasonable level of commercial activity and that it does not fringe neutrality as to the form of commercial substance i e physical presence or virtual presence or whether it wants to take remedial suitable remedial measures to protect its revenue base any inertia in this exercise can only be at the cost of tax certainty it is evident that some guidelines are required to be issued in this respect to avoid conflicting opinions on the subject there is nothing to guide the taxpayers or the assessing authorities when it comes to determining whether the existence of virtual presence is sufficient to have an excess with the indian revenue base it hardly needs to be emphasized that this issue will only gain prominence in the years to come looking at the pace of technological advancement i'm reminded of the e-commerce committee that was set up by the indian government way back in 1999 wherein the fir- first and foremost principle that the committee agreed was delivery of goods change in delivery of goods will not alter the characterization of income such cases present challenges to the revenue authorities and also to ju- 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 judicial authorities who have to appreciate complex technical and factual scenarios and see if they fit the extant legal framework tax council for ssc or for the government can no longer afford to be mere forensic experts in the law 